service and the prelude is nothing other than, O oh, come, all ye faithful. So as you sit and as people still enter from the door, please sing these words with us. We're not going to sing all seven hymns or all seven verses. We're only going to sing three, verses one, six, and seven. But let's join in song as we come together to worship. O oh, come, all ye faithful. On this Christmas morning, we come together and we acknowledge the people on whose land we meet, the Wadandi people, as they have been the custodians of this land for ages and ages. We acknowledge the elders, past, present, and emerging, who have walked with God on this vast land. We acknowledge them also today. I welcome you to this service. And we have visitors from all over the world here. And I do feel and hope that you feel welcomed here this morning. Also those watching online, uh, welcome. And those who watch through the DVD ministry later, I hope that you enjoy this Christmas service with us. We're going to give a few moments to Glynis as she's going to share with us the notices and the concerns of the church, uh, and it's basically just one thing, and we all hopefully know what it is. Thank you, Glynis. Good morning, and a Merry Christmas to you all on this lovely warm day. Um, for our local members, Fred and Arthur are still having treatment, so if you would keep them in your prayers, please. There's no service tomorrow morning here, 
so you, you go and visit some other congregation or you have fellowship at home and enjoy your families. Uh, Greg it will be down at the campsite for the next few weeks, so if you need pastoral care or anything, if you'd contact Marg, who's down the front here, uh, Jane up the back there, or myself, that would be good, or Richard, he's the chairperson of the congregation. Um, there was one other thing. Oh, the offering today is for Christmas Bowl, so if you feel that you would like to share with that, that would be good. Thank you. Thank you, Vin. Thank you, Linus, for the news and notices and the concern. We begin with a call to worship, and our call to worship is a responsive prayer. And my response, now I just want to make sure, my response, that is in yellow, and that which is highlighted, but in white print, that is where you, uh, as the congregation, join in in the prayer. So let us begin with our call to worship. Into our world, as into Mary's womb, Lord Jesus. Into the forgotten places, as into the stable. Into the lives of the poor, bringing hope. Into the lives of the powerful, bringing caution. Into the lives of the weary, bringing rest. Into the lives of the wise, bringing restlessness. And into our lives and longings, whoever we are. Come, Lord this is the good news. Christ is coming. And blessed are those who wait on the Lord. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord with the following words of adoration from the letter to Titus. And it's chapter 3, verse 4 to 7. And I read it for us. But when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared. He saved us, not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to His mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This Spirit He poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that, having been justified by His grace, we might become His, according to the hope of eternal life. The words of adoration is a proclamation of the God who we serve. And the God that we are serving this morning is the one that gave His only Son, gave His mercy, gave His grace to us, gave His love. It's not by any works that we have done, but it is by the power of Christ. And that is why I can greet you this morning with the words, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ through the powerful working of the Holy Spirit. I want to give you the opportunity to share in a greeting with the person sitting next to you, sitting behind you. Wish them a Merry Christmas. And as this is our last service for the year, Next service is only the 2nd of January. Wish them perhaps a happy new year. Uh, find out in a short while where they are from because we have some visitors here and, and welcome them. I give you the opportunity to share in the greeting and share the peace and share your blessing with the person sitting next to you or behind you. Let's greet each other.
if you can and if you are able to sing our hymn of praise. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let's sing our hymn of praise. Advent is a time where we prepare ourselves to meet or for the coming of Jesus Christ. And in the lighting of the candles, we're going to follow a responsive prayer. And then I want to make an invitation to anyone that feels that they want to come and light the candle to do so. And in that time, there will also be a hymn sung, a verse of a hymn. Uh, and I enjoy invite you to join in as we light the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and of love. Today, we celebrate Christmas, the feast that celebrates the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the feast that celebrates Emmanuel, God with us. While we light the candle of hope, we thank God for the hope we receive from Him. Jesus, you are the hope in our messy world. Help us slow down, listen to your voice, and focus on what's really important. We place our hope in you as we celebrate your birth on this day. Make the invitation to anyone that feels that they want to come and light the candle of hope to come and do so. us to be, fill us with a deep and abiding peace. Help us share the peace with everyone we encounter, especially those who need it most. Make the invitation to anyone that wants to come and light the fan candle of peace. 
to come and do so. Today we celebrate Christmas, the feast that celebrates the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the feast that celebrates Emmanuel, God with us. While we light the candle of joy, we thank God for the joy we receive from Him. Jesus, help us focus on You. May we stay aware of the joy You bring into our lives. We want to find You in everyday moments and come to you with hearts of gratitude on this Christmas day. Make the invitation for someone to come, I think Vicky is already here, to light the candle of joy. Today we celebrate Christmas, the feast that celebrates the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the feast that celebrates Emmanuel, God with us. While we light the candle of love, we thank God for the love we receive from Him. Jesus, may the light of your love always shine on our hearts. We marvel at your great love for us. Let your love transform every aspect of our lives and touch everyone we encounter, our hearts are open to you. I invite someone to come and light the fourth candle, the candle of love. This love If you have brought your Bible with you, are welcome to open it at Luke chapter 2. We're going to read from verse 8 until verse 20. And Mark Garrett is going to lead us in the scripture reading. And as she comes to the lectern, let us pray our prayer for illumination. Again, it's a responsive prayer. Your word, O Lord, is a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. Luke 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. 
But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. This is the word of the God, of the Lord. Christ can be born a thousand times in Bethlehem. But if he's not born once in your heart, his birth will have no impact. With the birth of Christ, we celebrate Emmanuel, God, with us. It is often said that when a child is born, that that child looks like either the mother or like the father. But I think for the first time in history, the mother look like the child. Of course, God the Creator entered His creation. He came down to redeem His creation. He took on human flesh. For the first time, the mother looked like the child. The thing about the Christmas story and the nativity and Last night we all enjoyed the nativity again and reflecting on Christmas and, and all of this. I, I marvel about two things that come from the nativity, from Luke and from Matthew. And the first thing that we see here and from our scripture reading that we have read together today is that we see that God uses angels, angels to talk with the shepherd. And later, from the reading of Matthew, we see that God uses the stars to talk to the wise men and to guide them to the place where Jesus Christ can be found. I marvel in the sense that God still doesn't, or let's say, it wants to use you and me. To tell his story. To partake in his mission to the world. If we have to be honest, I think at any time, God could send many angels to convince the world. To convince the people of the world of his awesomeness, of his greatness, of his love. I think at any time, God could, could send the stars to spell a message out for us. But yet, he chose to become human. He chose to took on flesh. And he chose to entrust us with a message. A message of hope, love, peace, and joy. He wants to use us. The impact of the birth of Christ. Not just in Bethlehem, but also in our lives, in our hearts is twofold. First, first impact it has on our lives is 
that it is there to redeem us, to save us, to make sure that our relationship with God the Creator, with our relationship with God Almighty is there, to restore that relationship that sin has taken away. To restore that. But the second impact it has on our lives is that it calls us to service. It calls us to serve God in the mission in this world. C.S. Lewis in his book, Mere Christianity, writes that theology must always be practical. It cannot only stay in the book's heart and mind, but it must be lived out. I believe today and in the coming year, you and I should respond to the birth of Christ. Not just in Bethlehem 2,000 years ago, but also in our hearts. We should respond to the birth in our world that we live in. Respond to the birth in our communities that we live in. The sad thing is, when we look at our newspapers, we watch the news bulletins, look at our local Facebook groups and community groups, we pick up that there's so much division going on at the moment. Whether it's on the political side, and some of us have to wear masks today, the results of COVID, being vaccinated or unvaccinated, should it be mandatory or should it not be? So much division going on just on that one level. Then we don't even mention the economic divisions that there is, including and excluding people just because they earn more or earn less. We need to respond to show the love of Christ in our community. For those in our community that face loneliness and isolation. I think those of us who immigrated to Australia, can I just see a show of hands who are, has immigrated to Australia? Look around you. We might be separated from our family, from our friends, of wherever we left. Due to the COVID restrictions and the travel restrictions and the border closures, it's not possible to meet our loved ones, to see our children, to be with our grandchildren. The other day I spoke with Glynis, and she reminded me of something that still touches my heart. If you get a little bit older, the next Christmas matters. The next birthday matters. To be with your loved ones, to be with your family, to be with your friends. Our response should be to bring, to bring hope to these people. I ponder on the words from Jesus on the cross in John 19, verse 26 to 27, when, when he said something like this to John and to Mary, Here is your son. Here is your mother. May you be a mother or a father to someone that needs a parent at this time. May you be a child to someone who misses their children at this time. May you be a brother, a sister, to someone that needs that at this time. And in doing that, in responding in that way, may you bring the hope that Christ brings to this people in your community. In a broken world, 
where domestic violence and violence in general seems to be in an increase. May you respond to the call and be a channel of God's peace in your community. I ponder on the words from Jesus when he said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. When you encounter someone or people that's in a strange relationship, may you be the channel of peace in your community. May you bring God's peace to that family, to that person, to that couple, to the people that struggle with violence and all sorts of violence. In a world plagued by health issues, but especially those who are facing mental health issues, where our war veterans struggle to cope with their thoughts and their experiences, of the past, where our loved ones experience depression and anxiety about the unknown future. And let's be honest on this. The future is a little bit unknown. But there, in that situation, may we respond and try to bring the joy of God to their lives by sharing His grace, His mercy, and your prayers with them. May we respond to give our time, our resources, to bring joy to the people and their lives around us. When we celebrate the birth of Christ, not just in Bethlehem, but in our own hearts, I have to ask you one question. Are you living the birth of Christ? Are you living the birth of Christ? It is my prayer that you would realize your call, your responsibility to ensure that the birth of Christ is truly lived in your community. That the people, your loved ones, the people from your community, your friends, your neighbors, who truly can testify that Emmanuel, God, is with us. He could use His angels. He could use the stars. But He chose to become flesh. He chose to use you and me to share His goodness, His love, His joy, His peace. Are we living the birth of Christ? Can I pray for you? Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, as we come today and celebrate your birth and we celebrate the gift that you have given us, the gift of your grace, the gift of your love, the gift of hope and joy and peace. Lord, may we find the opportunity and see the opportunity to live that out. Lord, we acknowledge that your birth isn't just 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. But your birth is also in our hearts. And that requires a response. Lord, it's my prayer for everyone that is sitting in this room watching online or on DVD that, that you will show us how we should respond to your birth. How we should make you known in our community. That the world can testify, Emmanuel, God, is with us. In Jesus' name I pray.
Amen. Today, we celebrate Christmas, the feast that celebrates the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, the feast that celebrates Emmanuel, God with us. While we light the candle of Christ, we thank God for the light we receive from Him. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Again Jesus spoke to them saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We thank you for the gift of your Son, that we may live in the light of his life. You are Emmanuel, God with us. You are the source of light and life. As we light the Christ candle, the fifth candle, we're going to sing a hymn that we started to sing at the beginning of Advent. Those from the Afrikaans community might recognize the melody. We've translated it into the summer Christmas. Welcome, O silent night of peace under the Southern Cross. Let's sing this hymn together as we light the last candle. Welcome to take your seats again and uh, we are going to have the opportunity to bring an offering and as you've heard, the offering is for the Christmas Bowl project, so I ask the ushers to please take up the offering if you have, Uh, please do give also for this project.
let us pray together. O oh God, on this Christmas day, we celebrate your birth among us as a human child. We celebrate alongside Mary and Joseph, who through their everyday work of parenting, would become part of your salvation story. On the first Christmas, there was no room in the inn. Protect with your love those in our community who have no home tonight who are living under bridges, in abandoned buildings, or in hostels. We pray especially for the homeless families with babies, who bear the fragility of new life in hard and anxious times. The Messiah came with the sign of a star shining in the night. Bright light to those, bring light to those who are suffering from sickness, who endure pain in mind or body, especially those people who are spending Christmas in the hospitals in our community. Jesus was born in a stable surrounded by the animals. He came as a savior for all creation. Bring healing and peace to our relationship with the earth. Renew our sense of the holy and give us wisdom to treat the world with respect and care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christmas service is not a Christmas service if Silent Night is not seen. When we sing the most famous Christmas carol of them all, please feel free to sing it in your own language if you know the word. But when we sing verse 3, I would like to remind you of the words of verse 3. Wondrous star, lend your light with the angels. Let us sing hallelujah to our king. Let us remember that God uses his angels and the stars, but he also chose to use us. Therefore, let us sing.
my prayer over your life this Christmas time is that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. As we exit, there's a final hymn that we can sing, and that is Angels from the Realms of Glory. But if we don't see you until next year, may you have a blessed new year as well. Thank you.